Hello everyone, it's Call again, Call's Corner. I um, think I'm coming to an end of this talks on the first book, an introduction to Write You So Well. I think I pretty much uh, said it all. Um, there are a few things that I would like to finish off with. Um, my purpose here was to share about my own experience with these books. Everybody has a very different journey with it. It's very individual because you have an individual will. And, um, you know, talking about the body of feeling that, um, you know, um, took a long time to really realize what these true feelings are and what is their purpose and how they actually uh, to be used, like it says in the right use of will, how to actually be fully free in your feeling body so it can create rather than regurgitate the the karma dramic sort of patterns of the sameness of sameness of the same. Um, so I just want to sum sum it all up, uh, sum up the. The main points, and you know, um, that constant reminder that the the feeling realm is vast. It's um, to some extent unexplored. It really is like an ocean below us that is so big. If you really look at it, how much water there is on the planet. Um, that's about how much of this will is available in us and um, whatever is land is basically just that which we can see which is the surface and um, the feelings that are below are um, An endless reservoir of um, most amazing way of being um, awakened to what it really is holding down there. Um, there's often a misperception that the will is what she holds, yeah, and what we hold in the will. Is what hasn't been released but when we actually begin to we come to a point where um, particularly the so-called darker feelings are moved and uh, the way they need to move not how we think we need to move them you know like they that deep feeling of hopelessness, helplessness. You know, when we fall into these places where we just go to like, what's the point? And this is impossible. And those really, really heavy duty feelings, you know, and, um, and most of all the guilt, which is like a deadlock. Any thoughts? that think this should be different or it's not okay to be the way we are. Those are all, you know, feelings of guilt, being in action, uh, affecting us day in, day out. So this guilt thing is very hard to move. And um, again, a lot of it is based on judgments that were <clears throat> rejected within ourselves and and judgments that creating the reality we see and that includes everything that is in our mind that's reflecting as world um, I can see that I have uh, kind of begin to lose the audience here and um, yeah this is not a subject that's 
entertaining and it's not a subject that um, for some people definitely not exciting for me this was exciting because when I realized that under my what I used to call feelings is an is a profound ocean of depth that's constantly flowing upwards uh, without stopping that um, nurtures nurtures the heart and uh, it transforms the mind transforms the limiting beliefs and construct and um, is capable of creating the, the sense of complete fulfillment and finding myself doing things that I love doing that I did not even think I would <laughs> like doing which is this podcast is part of it and um, I like to say that um, I have been um, incredibly inspired by a, a new movement that I'm doing and uh, that is that I you know, as the 1st of January I got this inspiration to uh, record and give comments like this and comment makes commentaries like podcasts around the Course in Miracles in Slovakian and uh, since January 1st I've just counted it yesterday I think I have either 93 or 94 um, videos that I put out on my on my YouTube and um, they are obviously all in Slovakian and uh, it was an evolution it was very dry and and it was a learning curve but it feels like uh, I have come to my first part of it and uh, I have translated for 60 lessons of course miracles and I've uh, recorded them and I put them out there and then um, made commentaries to many of these lessons how to do them similar like, like uh, right you so well that you know all my mistakes that I made at the beginning particularly the one where you know when it right you so well says express everything you feel I begin to talk and I didn't realize that I was not actually uh, feeling my feelings I was only talking about the the about my thoughts I had about what I thought I was feeling and uh, that really um, took me for, through a long journey journey to nowhere no many have justified I had it that um, I was doing the right thing I wasn't because when the will actually showed up I realized I was not really expressing my will I was just um, talking to myself and have not really been guided by the will or how to move the will has to guide us to release and um, if all of these podcasts were just good for that then um, they um, they might save you a lot of time if you are um, doing this at all of course it's not for everyone and uh, same as uh, Chorus of Miracles is not for everyone um, they're definitely two exquisite masterpieces and including the Course of Love which is uh, um, somewhere between these two and for me is a profound trilogy of of body of works like the Course of Miracles helps us really to look at the the judgment patterns and construct that the mind came up with Course of Love is um, really introduces us to the heart like nothing else I have come across yet and obviously right you saw all gives you a map of this profound ocean 
or earth of the magnetic understanding the magnetic part of ourselves like it says right at the beginning you know the unconditional love for everything by the spirit or by the surface has been kind of known but now it's time for another understanding and that is of the the divine will and there is no end to this it really is a long evolution I'm still uh, being affected by it but after I've done a Iraqi civil for so long and a course of love recently I have come to hear Course of Miracles from a completely different perspective again and it seems like all these trilogies are complementing each other like when I was doing just righteous of all I was just getting somehow lost and so I had to do it some other way and um, it wasn't wrong to be getting lost and it was very important to feel those places in me that felt lost okay? but there was something that um, that course have given me that I never found in righteous of all so clearly written and again came course of love and it confirmed all of that to a whole different level and for me personally um, what made all of this more practical was um, the work of the body of work of um, a man called David Deida who showed me how to actually use all this in a day-to-day -day living how to actually be with another person in a depth of union and depth of communication that I always desired to be in that I always wanted, knew that was more than just sitting around and talking. That there was this something else that I wanted to find out. And um, the work of David Data have really brought all this here on earth between, you know, learning how to actually share that. The, the holy instant, you know, or the golden age of the will, when the will is actually freed up to be who she really is and not just be what she's holding or has been holding. And the more she empties, the more she becomes the goddess that she is. And again, that word goddess, it's almost ridiculous um, in comparison to who she really is. Um, there's no comparison on earth what that quality is really like and it is a divine will and um, that is constantly um, renewing itself she is the mother she is the birther so it does come back to this an idea and then she gives it a manifestation and if I look around, I can see what that manifestation is because feeling eventually turn everything into form. And then as form, we are capable uh, better to see it. Yeah. So that's why how forgiveness works and has to be a real forgiveness, not just some kind of I forgive because there is that danger of forgiving the effect, right? So let's say I had a thought, my feeling manifested it, and then the body put it into a form, and then I condemned the form. So like, oh, look at that. It's like, hey, 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 hey. No, 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 this is what you've created. Because there's no escape from this. It's like, whatever you're looking at is yours. Is just the way you see it. There's no escape. 
yeah and no matter how right it might be it's the other people it's still you even so um, and that is let me put it this way that is because you know you always meet your own reflection and you will always magnetize because a will is magnetic the situations that you need to see what you have created so the the true forgiveness is when when the situation stop happening because you're no longer manifesting in your your mind your thinking through reflection of the will has been purified has been cleaned up of all the unloving thoughts it had all the unloving attack thoughts that um, that were held in mind which um, and look I am really only introducing the first book I would not dare to even go any further this is going to have to be your um, individual journey with the books if they are for you of course this might not be for you and uh, um, Um, your journey might be completely different to to this um, I only did this because Barry has invited me to to talk about it um, I really hope it was it was um, helpful and useful and obviously want to just finish off with that um, the necessity and importance to to really look at the uh, steps to healing and a complete recovery in a blue book and um, obviously read all that it's in between because I really address just uh, some bottom line aspects of these books um, because I was invited to and um, um, it's called steps to healing and a complete recovery which I must have mentioned most of the time as I was talking about these books and I will want to complete with this because uh, as far as I know the most people I know when I ask them about this and this, we're talking about people who've been doing these books for a long time when I asked them about the steps to healing and complete recovery the often was one of those chapters like just another chapter that's um, that's nothing but it is an absolute foundation for you to find out how you relating to your own feelings what is your relationship to this will yeah what is that which believes is conscious and what is its its attitude towards this feeling and um, this was probably the greatest awakening that ever occurred to me because I thought just evolving consciousness would would do it for me or if I just read enough books that tell me that I am the Holy Son of God and that I am powerful and, and I am this and I am that and I'm going like well if I'm all that <laughs> where is it actually ignited where is it really true that is actually shifts my reality to 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 the max where is the manifestation of it this is why i love the 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 body of work that david data has to offer i don't know if any of you are familiar with with the books of david data um unfortunately we ask them if we can use any of their materials but um, there was a very clear no I think they have a very strong thing of it's to be David's whatever the people that are behind him but his books are extraordinary they really explain the the polarity between men and women and how to help the other to enhance their polarity yeah because really 
without these polarities there is no creation and uh, it's even been called duality and um, it's often been suggested that it's something to get rid of but it's really not so not in my understanding and um, and that duality is that we are thinking feeling beings yeah, and that our spirit had to polarize itself in order to experience otherwise it would be just in its light and it would be just that you know an operating spirit but it would not be able to experience so it had to polarize and this polarity is um, more important than anything else because if we are not polarizing in ourselves eh, if we're in a not a good relationship with our feelings then our feelings are actually uh, shut off and all we are experiencing is a surface feeling yeah like the waves on the ocean but go below and you will find yourself in a new you um, there is no end to it it's a constant no new beginning as we as we learn to be okay with all these um, what we call dark forces but they're only darkened by by us <laughs> they're not darkened they're not dark it says in the book blue book says that darkness is part of creation that receives light darkness is part of creation yeah that receives light and not darkness is not something to get rid of and discard and then head for light head for light head for light because when a real light actually comes in it will begin to reflect everything that's held down there and you're not going to be able to lift off you're not going to be able to enter into that life <laughs> i was like saying the other day you know people say oh i had a near they call it near death experience i call it near life experience because um because they basically begin to experience something extraordinary different huh? they always say well then i wasn't re wasn't ready and i came back what they didn't tell you why they were not ready yeah if it was so exquisite and so profound why wouldn't they stay huh? and I'll tell you why and I think it's a very different story you know they think oh no 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 I've got to go down to earth and tell people about it <laughs> well that's a nice excuse my experience of this was because I, I had experiences of not only a little experience of going into this um, neither experience I was actually there for days and um, you know it feels so incredible and you just keep going to this light and then you keep going into this light and suddenly this light begins to reflect what's held in your will and in your feeling body and after about two or three days you will begin to go oh my god if this increases anymore i don't think i'm gonna be able to handle this comes day four and i'm just kind of making a story out of it comes a certain time where you go ooh, 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 i don't think i can handle this yeah because what's been held within you and hasn't been reverberated and released before will get magnified and if you have um, a number of these unreleased tension in you they will ignite all at the same time and that is also one of the reason why we should never go past a trigger in a book so these books are designed to trigger you right right at the beginning it says these books are meant to trigger you and not to be just a mental exercise so 
if you get to the next books and you're reading and reading and you go like, ooh, that really triggered me. And you keep on reading. Now you have an activated trigger. And then you keep going and you get a next trigger. And now you have two triggers fired off at the same time. And if you're still lazy to stop and put the book down and begin to make sound and begin to reverberate your physical body so you actually get in touch in w with what it is really and what you think or how it should move, but that you learn how to step back enough for that will to actually move, it, move itself the way it needs to move and not the way consciousness thinks it needs to happen. You might be surprised at what this will, how it suddenly expresses. Um, even things like rage or, you know, um, or the profound terror in a way that has never moved before. Yeah, it's got to be brand new each time. If you're in these routines, of thinking you're releasing, thinking you're releasing, and it's happening on and on and on. You actually just uh, pretty much it's just mind masturbation, thinking it's doing something. Uh, mind thinking it needs to move something, and now I'm gonna move this. No, 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 you gotta learn how to step back and let the will show you how this is done, and it will never be the same. And the danger is that that release might come and we will think, oh, it worked like this last time. I'm going to do it the same thing, same way again. And this is where it's very individual because that will, will begin to move you in a completely different way <laughs> next time than before. So, yeah. That I would recommend because you will have a similar experience if you have two or three or four unmoved triggers um, fired off at the same time you're going to feel very uncomfortable because you, you will not know what any of, the, of it is and that's very similar to that experience of starting to enter into this in a sort of like a near life experience and it comes a time where you just go oh my god just give me another body I need to return and that is real to me that is really the the true the truth of the fact of the returning otherwise the being could just simply enter their whatever realm it is in and it could be hanging in there for as long as it wishes so and it wouldn't be that usual same thing. You know, people say, there it was, and there I saw it all, and there I was back, right? And but that part of the story, why, is always a really weird excuse <laughs> when I listen to these people. It's always a weird, weird excuse. Suddenly they find themselves here again and uh, bring this amazing message. But really, the message is um, you could be in any realm at any time you wish. If you have this capacity, and good. But if not, you're the one who is backed up by unexpressed will. So, hence, the steps to healing and a complete recovery is the powerhouse of a practice that is actually recommended as a main thing in the first book okay, as of what to do right and um, like that you can discover you can see all your own denials you know and uh, if you if you can't see them you can use the outside reality to trigger you so you begin to use the world to show you your own denials and uh to do it is to look at the situations that are bothering you, if there are any, 
they're bothering you in your world and allow yourself to have your feelings come up about this around these experiences that are occurring and um, when that situation in your outer reality suddenly is gone you have actually found the true feeling and you have done the steps to healing steps yeah there are certain steps to healing in a complete recovery yeah and so i'll run those over real quickly and then i'll bring this whole series of calls corner to an end because the, the rest is in your precious hands and uh, you will know whether this is for you or not and so the steps to healing in a complete recovery I also have to say that if you have a 2010 version of right you civil book you will have you won't have these steps and I think um, I'm not doing anything illegal if I actually bring these steps out because they are not in the 10, 000, 2010 version and they are brought back in in a 2020 edition <sighs> if you're hearing this coughing and spitting that's my son next door is some um, with fluey so hopefully it's not picking up and obviously our cicadas are in its so if you hear this high pitch hiss that's um that's cicadas so here are the here are the steps right i'm actually going to say this because it is missing in that edition and when i ask the channel why it was missing she wrote me back and said something like goodness gracious you know that was not meant to be taken out and i think this just simply was an editing error so this what i believe is the most important part of righteous of it's actually missing in those books and it should be publicly known because that's uh to me that's uh that can set you up on a journey without these particular steps which I think are fundamental to this um, to these books and to really healing our planet right we need to really look at this reflection that we are getting hmm? so instead of going in and fight against things that are occurring in the world which is usual case you know something's occurring and then there is the opposition that's doing something against it so here it is instead of that we need to find out why do we have this reality and shift it in ourselves because we're basically then attacking our reflection and that is not going to help us much so if something's going on and you need to realize why you have the denial in yourself so recognizing your own denial is the first step you know you could recognize that every feeling and a thought you know that that you would normally ignore or push away you know um, and then um, there is a tendency always to move towards the positive and deny the negative right and uh, the night part is actually trying to get acceptance right but uh, if we deny it it's it's dead again it's been pushed down again hey eh? so once we can accept these denied parts of ourselves we can actually um, give them a release and and uh, we will find out why they are there in the first place that will show you your original cause what put them in the first place in you because what you then experiencing are just reenactments your reenactment of a reenactment of a reenactment of a reenactment and 
then you can go to therapy and play with it and shift around it, but you will not actually find out what originally caused it. Yeah? So when you when you get in touch with the night this the night part, you know, uh, you have to reclaim it. And some of these denied parts in us are not in a good shape. And so if um, if they to heal them, we need to um, begin to hear from them. But the mind is so quick not wanting to hear from this part of ourselves that it will zoom into positive thinking or it will disturb itself from the need to do so. It comes a, a discomfort, we reach for food, we reach for the remote control, we, we reach for the mobiles, we reach for some kind of way to escape. So instead, situation arises, how does this make me feel? And then step back and wait for the feeling to inform us. Again, I want to reiterate the danger of the idea of going into the feeling. Yeah, because when we go into the feeling, we're going with something what we call conscious, which really is our most of our unconsciousness. And we go and bring all our past associations and we project onto these feelings what we think they are. And we're not going to get informed by the will. So the right use of will is really, how am I feeling? And then become awake enough or interested enough to see what it's actually trying to tell us in a feeling way because as we know thoughts and feelings are very different quality you know one is electric the other one is magnetic one expresses through thinking and thoughts the other one expresses through emotions and by expressing a feeling this expression of feeling has is not the most popular way of expressing and so the mind rushes in and begins to describe what it thinks it's feeling and it takes it into their stories and the realms of its own and it basically escapes the actual truth of it yeah and it's only because these feelings are uh, usually so dark and bruised and ugly looking that we go oh, this could not be possibly part of me eh? it's like you know shame huh? it's like we think it's it's not part of us it's totally part of us it's only ugly by its state of denial that it looks so unacceptable in ourselves that we think we're learning from somebody else or or I can really see it in a, in my kid when he was born and you know something would happen and he would just drop himself into shame that and collapse his whole physical realm his his body that would just go like wow we've never really demonstrated this this is in him this is his own personal karma drama and it's got nothing that he learned from it because I personally you know transform shame as I mentioned before it was one of my first darkest feeling pretty dark feeling because I had it very deep until it became light and suddenly feeling of shame became really beautiful <laughs> I know it makes no sense but it actually is so if you use these steps to healing um, it says steps to healing and complete recovery complete so there is actually completion to this process yeah but unless we get this fundamental movement the rest of the books can become an absolute nightmare and it will they still be quite a nightmare 
but um, at least you will have a personal power with which to actually learn how to step back and really allow the feeling expressed the way it needs to express without this bombardment of the mind and its control that makes the feeling um, pressured to express the way the mind thinks it needs to express. Okay, so he says in his like, if this is the missing paragraph, if the expression does feel like a part of you, but it's very sickened by its state of denial, <laughs> denial from us, yeah, you need to nurse it back to health in any way that you can. So here comes a feeling that, let's say, is being chasing you forever. You know the one, right? So he says, talk to it. It's like, imagine that feeling that every time it arises, we just go like, oh, not this feeling again. What does that do? That just blackens it. That darkens it. And the feeling goes, here I come again. Here I'm rejected again. Huh? And this time, you're going to take a new approach. He says, talk to it. You know, say hello. Hello, feeling. I um, don't particularly like you. <laughs> you know? And now you're in your honesty. Now you begin to communicate to this part of yourself that seems like it's just this dark, heavy, um, nothing somewhere in there just dragging your speed, Dra a drag on your speed, hey? So we can talk to it. The second thing is accept its responses to you, okay? Well, can you, right? And this was my great discovery here. That I couldn't it's like accept his responses if I was really honest. I was not accepting shame at all. And that non-acceptance was keeping the shame what it is, on and on and on. So first I had to discover that I actually have a massive non-acceptance of that feeling. And then I had to transfer, um, transform this non-acceptance and what did that non-acceptance need it needed acceptance did i have the acceptance of my non-acceptance no so now i felt like i was trapped because i needed acceptance i had non-acceptance and i had non-acceptance of that so what did i have to do is to accept the fact that i had that this is where the mind is going to go crazy because you go, oh, 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 no, now you're really confusing me. But this is the mind's trick. Yeah. It knows very well that it's the mind itself is an unconditional non acceptance of feelings. It actually wants to have nothing to do with feelings in its core. Because that's how it maintains its heartlessness, its, its uh, unlovingness, eh? and maintains itself as, as mind only. And if there is only mind, there is no will. And if there is no will, there is not real heart. And when there is not real heart, there is not a real manifestation. And so here we are you know, um, in the world we see. So that step is very important to, to realize, do I have acceptance for it or not? And then be with the non-acceptance until it's transformed into acceptance, or at least a little bit of a genuine acceptance. This is the real key to the movement of anything to do with will. Because generally, the, if you actually read this book, the word acceptance is mentioned everywhere. Once you are aware of it, you will see it everywhere. Because without acceptance, nothing evolves and nothing moves. So the world stays the same. If you wake up in the morning and you go, uh oh, <laughs> same thing. It's exactly what it is. Yeah. It's that mind that does not want change while pretending it wants to learn new things. 
So very important step. And then there's a beautiful step where it says, explain to it, to that feeling, why you felt you had to deny it. Mm -hmm. So the conversation and really doing this out loud is a gold. So explain to it why you felt you had to deny it. So you say, let's say, shame, I've been denying you because you are an awful thing that creeps onto me and then I blush and then I feel less and I feel like you just drowned my day you know and you just talk and talk and talk and you explain to it every reason why you have been denying it and as you do that what actually happens this feeling will go oh my god this this guy is actually talking to me is that for real and it begins to open its darkened eyes you know because um, it's suddenly that feeling is getting the most needed feeling of acceptance instead of the feeling that we're against it right Guys, here is just, this is a real cracker, right? When you see these three steps and you realize that that you've been ignoring those feelings, that you have non-acceptance for them, which is a step two, and, and that you have a huge story, which is a, which with all of this feeling, or with, um, with this feeling, huge story, you know, which is in the explanation, you will realize that the only next step, and that's a step four, is to apologize to it. Okay? So you, the mind will go, hey, feeling of shame, I apologize to you for not understanding you, for denying you, for controlling you, for dragging you and holding you down. And what happened to me personally, I... When it says apologize to it, <laughs> I really got in touch with my arrogance. That that said something like, "Are you kidding me? You mean me apologizing to a feeling, to a feeling of shame that I thought was like a disgusting, horrible energy? You got to be kidding me!" And there I saw my arrogance. There I saw that. This mind is this puny little shithead, you know, that is part of us that actually doesn't want to have anything to do with our feelings. So for me, that was a massive revelation, just to see that. And then it says in the next one, so like, ask its forgiveness. You know, ask the feeling of shade to forgive you for denying it and for making it the ugly thing you thought it was. And then there is almost like a little waiting period. It might take a couple of days. By the way, first time it took me to transform this, maybe took 10 days. Yeah. Uh, specifically because I became aware of this non-acceptance. And that took the most of the time to transfer into a genuine acceptance. The minute there was this genuine acceptance for this feeling, this feeling expressed so much of itself. And suddenly there was no longer this friction of me trying to reject it. So um, asking forgiveness, it might take a couple of days. Because... The will is actually an unconditional acceptance of everything. She's beautiful. Um, but she hasn't been able to do this. And so when you genuinely apologize and genuinely ask for forgiveness, she is like the Penelope, you know, she's just this waiting mother within that never get sort of we never really look at her, you know. And she's just waiting, waiting, waiting for us. 
and uh, if you do it genuinely she is already ready to forgive yeah but it has to be the spirit it has to be the mind that that wants this and then you forgive yourself for denying it so how many that's that we step six yeah so first step is talk to it second accept his responses three explain to it why you had to deny it four apologize to it five ask its forgiveness six forgive yourself for denying it right and can you can you forgive yourself that you've done all this that you didn't even know you had to do <laughs> right and then he says in short negotiate a new relationship with this part of yourself and the rest of you so you you go hey what shall we how shall we have it now can we be friends you know I want to be your friend and uh, genuinely with you when you come with a deep deep apology to anyone who's not your friend and you say hey I want I just want to genuinely be your friend I don't want to be your enemy anymore right well as this begins to happen with that particular feeling and all the other ones eventually you'll begin to see that suddenly you will have an incredible friends coming your way um, I don't want to brag but seriously I'm surrounded by an absolute delightful crew of just my closest neighbors that's probably the most awakened people I have ever come across <laughs> those local gurus they can <laughs> keep continuing what they're doing these guys are, are just pure Christ you know mind heart why because I don't have a conflict in myself so I don't draw to myself anything that's that conflictual and uh, of course there are some conflictual sort of things in me still and it's all a matter of time but definitely not the world I used to live in so you negotiate a new relationship as if you negotiate a new relationship with your boss where you say hey you know what it hasn't been so good but can we start again I want to be your friend. I don't want to fight. Imagine the countries would do that to each other. I said, like, hey guys, you know, we've been pressuring you and we've been controlling you, but guess what? We want to renegotiate the, the relationship. You know, if the president went and said, hey guys, opposition, let's, can we, is there a way we could unite rather than you know keep dividing and dividing and dividing but we have to begin with ourselves there's no way this is gonna happen any other way because the world is reflecting us what's going on in ourselves so this is the most important shift if we want to see a different world and then it says release judgments involved right for me it was like hey shame I've been calling you shape shame but maybe you are not shame maybe you're something else what are you and then again um, shame could not express itself straight away but maybe a few days later suddenly it showed me itself from its original beauty that it was so it was just a real feeling that got misunderstood that God attacked that God destroyed and then got judgments layered on it what it is and so now every time it reared its ugly head I would just what deny it again and the transformation is I just don't want to do that again so suddenly, out of nowhere, in the moment when I least expected it, the shame would arise and go, Hello. <laughs> Hello, Cole. And I go, Oh my God, what is this most beautiful thing that I'm actually experiencing right now? 
like say, hey, that's me, with a little bit of a, a release that occurred. So, releasing judgment, delabeling feelings from what they think they were labeled as. So the feeling themselves can begin to show us what they truly are, who they truly are. And this is the transformation with a with a with a lasting effect. Because once you transform one feeling to its beauty, it's really like the beauty and the beast, you know, or kissing the frog, you know. It's like it's the same thing that the love transforms everything and all these dark and denied feelings are gonna receive love and they are going to transform and that is the transformation that will reverberate the will and then will can finally birth your heart and there will be no things like I love you or I need your love because you will have a heart like you've never had before and you will love like you never loved before and then you realize the more you love more that heart loves the way it normally does is the most fulfilling thing for you where you begin to have no need or lack yeah I can manifest for myself any feeling I want and uh, once this more of these so-called negative feelings are transformed then comes a transformation of positive feelings and uh, this came to me quite late in the process really only about four or five years ago where I go God I'm always you know it says express every f express f hang on to evolve your will express every feeling and till you're really finished I think that's exactly the quote and I said, well, I'm constantly expressing these so-called negative feelings, you know, like we will call shame a negative feeling. But what about the positive feelings? And um, um, this was a revolutionary for me because um, I suddenly realized that I am actually quite incapable expressing uh, positive feelings until was until it was really finished so I would naturally feel let's say <laughs> like I said you know just feeling good and then what an expression of feeling good to the max because truly and I don't know if, if you guys are getting this thing from because I mentioned it many many times is that everything we do at the most superficial level we're doing it just to feel good but then when this feeling of feel good comes in can we really be with it can we really give it the mass manifestation also that it needs can we give it the full expression that it requires yeah so right, you soul says, you know, somewhere in there, it's like, the gift of this is to bring you feelings that don't have to deny anything at the end. So the final steps of healing has to be expression of positive feelings. And you might find yourself in a more difficult position than expressing your rage or your whatever, you know, whatever your your most negative feelings are or whatever you call personally your most unloved feelings eh? so you know just to sitting in a in a sense of feeling good and make sure you feel it in the physical body um, completely in every part that includes your little toe or your bone marrow or your you know name it name any part of you can you feel it there? Can you feel good in your... <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Can you feel good in your belly? You know? Can you feel good in your belly button? You know? 
and uh, can you feel good in your earlobe or your hair or your eye or your nose or your tongue does your tongue feel good no is your brain feeling good see those are all parts of ourselves that often don't express but they still an aspect of of our physical reality that often doesn't get you know how about intestines huh? how about you feel real good in you know um, how could I say it very decently you know what I mean <laughs> um, yeah your private parts can you feel good there you know can you feel good in your um, nerves in your nervous system can you feel good in your lymphatic system can you feel good in your mental body right those are all aspects of us that often are not most welcome to express because we're just busy doing other things so imagine now you feeling good everywhere Again, it's just a willingness to do so and you might begin to start feeling all the resistance to doing this and yet everything we do we're doing just for that you know we go to work so we can get some money so we can go and buy the thing that's gonna make us what at the end just gonna make you feel good you know you buy yourself a new sofa and you're sitting on it and you what? Feel good. Uh, particularly if it worked. <laughs> if it's not a sofa that's going to go, oh my God, I think I bought the wrong thing. <laughs> but yeah, so feeling good or feeling joy. I remember when I started doing this, I was sitting and I said, I'm just not going to move from joy. It's not going to move. And then suddenly the amount of imprints the amount of judgments that are rolled in to tell me how I should be feeling different and I should not be feeling good and how I don't deserve to feel good and how I should be feeling some other feelings and been expressing more my dark side and I go like why wow, I am so off balance so for me personally this was a big journey um, righteous of all actually doesn't go so much in it but it, righteous of all does go into the original creation where um, there were the orgasmic expressions and um, and you will see that when you free your will you know you will you will as a result begin to feel quite orgasmic everywhere and I'm not talking about sexuality at all here I'm talking about a full body uh, a reverberation of of your natural inheritance which is actually you know <laughs> just feeling really good and uh, coming back to that experience of near life experience what people experience as a near death experience um, is the same thing and that um, the more you begin to go into this light or more the light is beginning to express from you the more everything that's still held in that light will begin to magnify itself and it will become uncomfortable to a point where we will shut this light and that's how we stop these experiences rather than being able to remain in it and remain in it and remain in it without and being its natural flow which is the will flowing upwards you know very beautifully expressed in the in the last book of Raichi Sobo called um, Indigo the last few pages of Indigo just absolutely exquisite expressing how it is that the will begins to manifest reality that is actually delightful and that's romantic and that's warm and beautiful and um, 
deeply connecting and deeply connecting us with others and it's not just an individual experience but it is a new relationship you know entering into the union because if i'm united with my will and then comes this kicker where my will is united with my spirit hey and um that birth of heart takes place and uh and a body begin to elevate you know begin to be able to be in a different um, um, you know different realms different existences different um, planets if you want to call it that way um, there are endless amount of possibilities of who could we can be if we are free ourselves from this heavy um, kind of rejection of the self yeah so i want to say also that some people are more mind like i am and so i'm speaking a lot of this from that perspective there are beings who are way way more feeling okay eh? So I had to re, I had to um, resurrect my will. Some people are more will, yeah, they're way, way more will, like the Lemurians and uh, and and the uh, you know people who are just feeling, and you start talking to them like I talk, and they just look at me like, did you have to say all that? <laughs> But this is who I am, right? This is how I do it. And people don't like it. They don't have to like it. They can express their feelings around it. And that would bring balance between us. So just to know that if you find this step is difficult, you might be one of those people who is actually will polarized. They're very feeling. and But they would find... It difficult to express themselves verbally because they're just this feeling and again same as me being more spirit polarized is an imbalance to some extent and I had to re um, resurrect my will that the will people they need to resurrect their spirit because just like Lemuria perished, they also are not going to go anywhere. No matter how feeling they are, they're just caught up in this ocean and just moving this and moving that. But it doesn't have the holding presence which spirit can be. Yeah, Spirit, when it wakes up and begins to be unconditionally present for the will, she would begin to feel like a container she would feel like she is the river and the spirit is the riverbank that holds it to flow the way it needs to flow the way it wants to flow and the spirit is not gonna freak out about it it's just it's just gonna see the beauty of the flow okay that's the flow of life that it, it can then flow so it is also important from spirit uh, from the will people and hopefully one day um, somebody from this will presence will begin to be able to put it into words or find another means of communicating where feelings get translated to conscious awareness and um um just, i was just looking at my my um recording is letting me know that i need to bring to this bit this to a close so i will um one more thing i say you know some people are spirit polarized some people are more will polarized some people are 
more heart or denied heart and obviously a vast amount of people are just the body aspect more predominantly i'm not saying that's all they are just more predominantly evolve in that realm right so there's always these four parts and so i wanted to bring that um to an awareness and obviously all of this is beautifully explained in the righteous of all the whole series there's um there will be sections for you to get triggered and there will be sections that help you to understand what the hell is going on when you actually are triggered and what are the moves and what are the steps that you need to take when it gets to that steps to healing that i just explained they just only in the first book it's the most beautiful thing that ever happened to me in my life uh, i want to thank you all for um listening um barry for giving me the corner <laughs> calls corner to express all this and um yeah just want to thank you all thank him thank god and thank the the will that it's being the most incredible thing that ever happened in my life so um, wishing you all well and uh, maybe we'll meet again in some other calls corner there's a there's a lot i have to share but different series of books that are out there so if there is any interest i might enter into those different realms all right thank you again and um, bye for now <laughs>